Nicaea or Nicaea was an ancient city in northwestern Anatolia, and is primarily known as the site of the First and Second Councils of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed, and as the capital city of the Empire of Nicaea following the Fourth Crusade in 1204, until the recapture of Constantinople by the Byzantines in 1261. The ancient city is located within the modern Turkish city of Iznik, and is situated in a fertile basin at the eastern end of Lake Ascanius, bounded by ranges of hills to the north and south. It is situated with its west wall rising from the lake itself, providing both protection from siege from that direction, as well as a source of supplies which would be difficult to cut off. The lake is large enough that it could not be blockaded from the land easily, and the city was large enough to make any attempt to reach the harbour from shore-based siege weapons very difficult. The ancient city is surrounded on all sides by 5 kilometres of walls about 10 metres high. These are in turn surrounded by a double ditch on the land portions, and also included over 100 towers in various locations. Large gates on the three land-bound sides of the walls provided the only entrance to the city. Today the walls have been pierced in many places for roads but much of the early work survives and, as a result, it is a major tourist destination. History Early history in imperial times, the city ascribed its foundation to the god Dionysus or to the demigod Heracles and claimed to have been named after the nymph Nicaea, as evidenced in the city's coinage. Other traditions claim that the city was first established by Botians, and to have originally borne the name of Angor or Helicor, or by soldiers of Alexander the Great's army who hailed from Nicaea in Lucris, near Thermopylae. The later version however was not widespread even in antiquity. Whatever the truth, the first Greek colony on the site was probably destroyed by the Mysians, and it fell to Antigonus the first Monothalmus, one of Alexander's successes to refound the city California. 315 BC as Antigonia after himself. Antigonus is also known to have established Botian soldiers in the vicinity, lending credence to the tradition about the city's founding by Botians. Following Antigonus' defeat and death at the Battle of Ipsus in 301 BC, the city was captured by Lysimachus, who renamed it Nicaea, in tribute to his wife Nicaea, who had recently died. Sometime before 280 BC, the city came under the control of the local dynasty of the kings of Bithynia. This marks the beginning of its rise to prominence as a seat of the royal court, as well as of its rivalry with Nicomedia. The two cities' dispute over which one was the preeminent city of Bithynia continued for centuries, and the 38th oration of Dio Chrysostom was expressly composed to settle the dispute. Roman period along with the rest of Bithynia, Nicaea came under the rule of the Roman Republic in 72 BC. The city remained one of the most important urban centers of Asia Minor throughout the Roman period, and continued its old competition with Nicomedia over preeminence and the location of the seat of the Roman governor of Bithynia A. Pontus. The geographer Strabo described the city as built in the typical Hellenistic fashion with great regularity, in the form of a square, measuring 16 stadia in circumference, i.e., approx. 700 meters by 700 meters or 0.7 kilometers by 0.7 kilometers covering an area of some 50 hectares or 0.5 square kilometers, it had four gates and all its streets intersected one another at right angles in accordance with the Hippodamian plan, so that from a monument in the center all the four gates could be seen. This monument stood in the gymnasium, which was destroyed by fire, but was restored with increased magnificence by Pliny the Younger, when he was governor there in the early 2nd century AD. In his writings Pliny makes frequent mention of Nicaea and its public buildings. Emperor Hadrian visited the city in 123 AD after it had been severely damaged by an earthquake and began to rebuild it. 
The new city was enclosed by a polygonal wall of some 5 kilometers in length. Reconstruction was not completed until the 3rd century, and the new set of walls failed to save Nicaea from being sacked by the Goths in 258 AD. The numerous coins of Nicaea which still exist attest the interest taken in the city by the Roman emperors as well as its attachment to the rulers, many of them commemorate great festivals celebrated there in honor of gods and emperors, as Olympia, Ismia, Dionysia, Pythia, Commodia, Severia, Philadelphia, etc. Byzantine period by the 4th century, Nicaea was a large and prosperous city, and a major military and administrative center. Emperor Constantine the Great convened the first ecumenical council there, and the city gave its name to the Nicene Creed. The city remained important in the 4th century, seeing the proclamation of Emperor Valens and the failed rebellion of Procopius. During the same period, the See of Nicaea became independent of Nicomedia and was raised to the status of a metropolitan bishopric. However, the city was hit by two major earthquakes in 363 and 368, and coupled with competition from the newly established capital of the Eastern Empire, Constantinople, it began to decline thereafter. Many of its grand civic buildings began to fall into ruin, and had to be restored in the 6th century by Emperor Justinian I. The city disappears from sources thereafter and is mentioned again in the early 8th century. In 715, the deposed Emperor Anastasius II fled there, and the city successfully resisted attacks by the Umayyad Caliphate in 716 and 727. The city was again damaged by an earthquake in 740, served as the base of the rebellion of Artabasdos in 741 halves, and served as the meeting place of the Seventh Ecumenical Council, which condemned Byzantine iconoclasm, in 787. Nicaea became the capital of the Opsitian theme in the 8th century and remained a center of administration and trade. A Jewish community is attested in the city in the 10th century. Due to its proximity to Constantinople, the city was contested in the rebellions of the 10th and 11th centuries as a base from which to threaten the capital. It was in the wake of such a rebellion, that of Nikephorus Melissenis, that it fell into the hands of Melissenos' Turkish allies in 1081. The Seljuk Turks made Nicaea the capital of their possessions in Asia Minor until 1097, when it returned to Byzantine control with the aid of the First Crusade after a long siege. The 12th century saw a period of relative stability and prosperity at Nicaea. The Komnenian emperors Alexios, John and Manuel campaigned extensively to strengthen the Byzantine presence in Asia Minor. Major fortifications were constructed across the region, especially by John and Manuel, which helped to protect the city and its fertile hinterland. There were also several military bases and colonies in the area, for example the one at Rindikos in Bithynia, where the Emperor John spent a year training his troops in preparation for campaigns in southern Asia Minor. After the fall of Constantinople to the Fourth Crusade in 1204 and the establishment of the Latin Empire, Nicaea escaped Latin occupation and maintained an autonomous stance. From 1206 on, it became the base of Theodore Lascaris, who in 1208 was crowned emperor there and founded the Empire of Nicaea. The Patriarchate of Constantinople, exiled from Constantinople, also took up residence in the city until the recapture of Constantinople in 1261. Although Nicaea was soon abandoned as the primary residence of the Nicaean emperors, who favored Nymphion and Magnesia on the Meander. The period was a lively one in the city's history, with frequent synods, embassies, and imperial weddings and funerals. While the influx of scholars from other parts of the Greek world made it a center of learning as well, after the restoration of the Byzantine Empire in 1261, the city once again declined in importance. The neglect of the Asian frontier by Michael VIII Paleologos provoked a major uprising in 1262 and in 1265. 
Panic broke out when rumors circulated of an imminent Mongol attack. Emperor Andronikos II Paleologos visited the city in 1290 and took care to restore its defenses, but Byzantium proved unable to halt the rise of the nascent Ottoman Emirate in the region. After Emperor Andronikos III Paleologos and John Cantacuzanos were defeated at Pelican on of June 1329, the Byzantine government could no longer defend Nicaea. Nicaea finally surrendered to the Ottomans after a long siege 2 March 1331. Ottoman Empire In 1331, the city was conquered and incorporated into the Ottoman Empire by Orhan I. Many of its public buildings were destroyed, and the materials were used by the Ottomans in erecting their mosques and other edifices. With the fall of Constantinople in 1453, the town lost a great degree of its importance, but later became a major centre with the creation of a local faience pottery-making industry in the 17th century. Ruins The ancient walls, with their towers and gates, are relatively well preserved. Their circumference is 3,100 metres, being at the base from 5 to 7 metres in thickness and from 10 to 13 meters in height, they contain four large and two small gates. In most places they are formed of alternate courses of Roman tiles and large square stones, joined by a cement of great thickness. In some places columns and other architectural fragments from the ruins of more ancient edifices have been inserted. As with those of Constantinople, the walls seem to have been built in the 4th century. Some of the towers have Greek inscriptions, the ruins of mosques, baths, and houses, dispersed among the gardens and apartment buildings that now occupy a great part of the space within the Roman and Byzantine fortifications, show that the Ottoman era town centre, though now less considerable, was once a place of importance but it never was as large as the Byzantine city. It seems to have been almost entirely constructed of the remains of the Byzantine era Nicaea, the walls of the ruined mosques and baths being full of the fragments of ancient Greek, Roman and Byzantine temples and churches. In the northwestern parts of the town, two moles extend into the lake and form a harbour, but the lake in this part has much retreated, and left a marshy plain. Outside the walls are the remnants of an ancient aqueduct. The Church of the Dormition, the principal Greek Orthodox church in Nicaea, was one of the most architecturally important Byzantine churches in Asia Minor. A domed church with a cross-shaped nave and elongated apse, and dating from the perhaps as early as the end of the 6th century. Its bema was decorated with very fine mosaics that had been restored in the 9th century. The Church of the Dormition was destroyed in 1922, only the lower portions of some of its walls survive today. Excavations are underway in the Ottoman kilns where the historic Nicene tile ware were made. The High Eusophia is also undergoing restoration. See of Nicaea The Bishopric of Nicaea remains as a titular see of the Roman Catholic Church which has left the seat vacant since the death of its last titular bishop in 1976. It is also a titular metropolitan see of the Ecumenical Patriarchate of Constantinople. The incumbent 2001-2010 was the former Archbishop of Karelia and All Finland, Metropolitan Johannes. Notable people, Hippicus Greek astronomers, geographer, and mathematician, Sporus of Nicaea Greek mathematician and astronomer, Georgius Pachymeres Byzantine historian, Cassius Dio Roman historian, in popular culture, the Horus Heresy novel series features a fictional planet named Nicaea. In the novels A Thousand Suns and Prospero Burns, the planet Nicaea is the site of a great trial-like debate concerning heresy and the supernatural, reminiscent of the historical First Council of Nicaea.